Today, we're going to be diving into a brand new material from 3DX Tech, CarbonX HDN Plus CF. Now, if that sounds familiar, it should. This is essentially the next evolution of a material that Ascentium used to produce years ago. And 3DX Tech is picking up right where they left off, bringing it back with a serious focus on performance. HTN plus CF is short for high temperature nylon reinforced with about 20% chopped carbon fiber. It's built for extreme strength, chemical resistance, thermal performance, and durability. If you've ever needed a nylon that doesn't act like a sponge and doesn't warp off your print bed every time you sneeze in its direction, this is that. This material is optimized for industrial grade parts that need to survive real world abuse, and it's chemically resistant, dimensionally stable, and surprisingly print friendly, even without a heated chamber, thanks to its reduced warp characteristics. Although, we definitely recommend a heated chamber. Now let's break down how this compares to some other popular 3D printing materials versus standard nylon, for example. Regular nylons like PA6 and PA66 have great toughness, but are notoriously difficult to print. They absorb tons of moisture and warp heavily. HTN plus CF solves both of these problems. It's tougher, stiffer, and way easier to print. Versus like a standard CF nylon. If you printed carbon fiber nylon before, you might think, what's the difference? The key is heat and stability. Most CF nylons can't hold up beyond 120 degrees Celsius in the long term. HTN plus CF has a continuous use temperature of 150 degrees Celsius and an HDT of 200 degrees Celsius. That's borderline PEI territory versus PEI. Ultim still wins in terms of ultimate thermal and mechanical performance, obviously, but it's way more expensive and it's harder to print. HGN plus CF gets you surprisingly close without the need for a $30,000 machine. Versus polycarbonate. Polycarbonate, my favorite material, is great for impact resistance and general purpose strength, but HTN CF easily wins out in stiffness, heat resistance, and chemical durability especially. If your part needs to hold up shape in a hot, oily, chemical-heavy environment, HTN CF is going to last way longer. Now let's check out HTN plus CF versus its spiritual predecessor, Ascentium HTN plus CF25. If you're coming from the Ascentium ecosystem, you might be wondering, is this a true one-to-one -one replacement? Let's look at the numbers. But first, I want to clarify that all of these numbers come from parts printed on a Bamboo Labs X1C by 3DX Tech. Well, that's a great hobbyist printer, we want to see what kind of numbers we can get on our 22 IDEX with the heated chamber and the dual independent extrusion. We'll be sharing our results in a future video what our HTNCF parts did on our UTM testing machine. Tensile strength flat, Ascentium, 148 megapascals. 3DX Tech, 107 megapascals. Just a little bit behind. Flexural strength. Ascentium, 184 megapascals. 3DX Tech, 185 megapascals. HDT at 1.8 megapascals. Ascentium, 182 degrees Celsius. 3DX Tech, 200 degrees Celsius. Both materials have the same continuous use temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. Density, Ascentium, 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter. 3DX Tech, 1.25 grams per cubic centimeter. From what we're seeing, these materials are essentially in the same performance bracket. Flexural data is virtually identical, and the thermal specs are neck and neck, with 3DX Tech even pushing a little higher in the HDT. The biggest delta is in the tensile strength, where Ascentium's lab data comes in higher. That said, real-world print results and orientation heavily affect that outcome. Another thing worth noting is that Ascentium's numbers are probably coming from parts printed on their HSC 180, rest in peace. So these numbers are also coming from a more industrial 3D printer as opposed to a Bamboo Labs X1C. Again, not knocking the X1C is a great hobbyist printer. We love ours. But if you want to get some real work done, you're going to need an industrial high temp 3D printer like our 22 IDEX that we have back here. It's built with full dual extrusion and it can handle virtually every material you can throw at it. It's full open materials, it runs Prusa Slicer, you can pretty much do whatever you want with this thing. It's a workhorse not just for us, but small businesses, NASA, any major lab you can name in the United States, Caltech, JPL. A lot of major car companies. The 22 IDEX is getting some pretty heavy use around the world. If you were using Ascentium HTNCF before, this 3DX tech version will slot right in with little to no change in performance for most use cases. And bonus, it may even be easier to print. HTN plus CF is built for real functional parts. Here are just a few application areas. Automotive, under the hood components, mounting brackets, or housings that need to resist oil, fuel, and especially high heat. Aerospace, lightweight structural parts, interior fixtures, and brackets that need thermal and chemical resilience. Industrial manufacturing, jigs, fixtures, end of arm tooling, and robot accessories that need stiffness and long-term durability. I especially wanna emphasize jigs, fixtures, and tooling that can be 3D printed because essentially, if you have an assembly line and you need to retool it for a new set of parts, 
you can do that so much faster with additive manufacturing. You don't have to use subtractive manufacturing and traditional manufacturing to create your custom tooling that takes weeks of lead time and you can instead cut a lot of time and money by using additive manufacturing. And it's not just us saying that. There's a case study from Zeiss where they replaced a lot of their jigs and fixtures with 3D printed parts and they were able to retool assembly lines significantly faster and cheaper. So if they can reap the benefits of cost and time savings, you can too. Electronics, casing and brackets for components exposed to high temperatures and potential chemical exposure. Defense, rugged parts for field use where both mechanical and thermal performance are non-negotiable. Oil and gas slash energy, parts exposed to solvents, oils, fuels, or temperature cycling. HTNCF is not resistant to all chemicals, so your results may vary. If you need something that doesn't just survive high heat, but thrives in it, this is the material. Here's a breakdown of the core mechanical and thermal data based on third-party testing. Tensile strength in the flat orientation, 107 megapascals. Tensile modulus, flat, 6,736 megapascals. Tensile strength edge, 94 megapascals. Tensile modulus edge, 8,963 megapascals. Flexural strength, 185 megapascals. Flexural modulus, 9,515 megapascals. Deflection temperature at 1.8 megapascals, 200 degrees Celsius. Continuous service temperature for 20,000 hours, 150 degrees Celsius. These numbers put it above most CF nylons and just shy of PEI and peak class of materials. It's real serious stuff. Here's what we recommend for printing HTN plus CF, and these numbers come from 3DX Tech themselves. Nozzle temp, 295 degrees Celsius. Bed temp, 100 degrees Celsius. Chamber temp, not required, but recommended if available. And by recommended, we mean if you want your parts to be strong, you should be using a heated chamber. It's recommended that you dry this material at 80 degrees Celsius for four to six hours at minimum. Again, this is still a nylon, so it will absorb moisture. Nozzle. As always, we recommend hardened steel nozzles because carbon fiber strands will chew through brass, like no tomorrow. They will still chew through hardened steel, just not nearly as fast. As always, with every material, we highly recommend using a bottle of nanopolymer adhesive, especially if you're printing on glass or smooth beds. We designed it to print with Peak, PEI, Ultim, everything under the sun, mainly the high temp materials because they were curling and warping from the beds and breaking glass plates. But we found out this bottle of nanopolymer adhesive works perfect on virtually every material you can print in FDM. Why should you use it on HTM plus CF? Even though HTM CF does stick to the bed quite well, we highly recommend it just for consistency, just for insurance. If you are printing a gigantic part, it's definitely likely to warp, even if it's PLA, even if it's ABS. So we highly recommend using this because it pretty much guarantees that your part will not warp or come off the bed mid print. And best of all, you can take your part and the bed out of your printer, let it cool down, and the parts virtually pop off. Additionally, the stuff is water soluble, so you can clean it off your bed with ease. No need to scrape off remnants of glue stick or whatever else you're using, maple syrup even, there's a bunch of different things people use. Grab yourself a bottle of nanopolymer adhesive on our website or on Amazon, or from one of our wonderful resellers around the world. That about covers the specs, but now let's see how it performs. We're gonna take this material to our UTM and see what kind of strength this stuff has. Again, these parts are printed on our 22 IDEX with a heated chamber. So what I'm expecting to see is something a little akin to our CFPA6 video, which if you watched that video, you saw that we accidentally tested parts that were printed on a, I think a flash forge, something like that, some really basic printer and parts printed on our 22 IDEX with the heated chamber. And unsurprisingly, the 22 IDEX parts performed way better. So I think we will see these parts outperform some of the numbers that we're getting from 3DX Tech. Let's find out if I'm right. Okay, so now we're at the UTM, and first we're gonna test the parts printed in the XY orientation. So, let's begin. Horse is climbing, 1500. This part is quite strong. Damn, 4,241 Newtons, max force, wow. Let's start test number two. Already off the bat, you can see we are climbing a lot faster. 2700. Still, let's begin test number three with the XY. All right, we're at double what CFPA6 can do. Can we replicate the first result? 3780. That is still quite a lot. In the XY, our CFPA6 CarbonX from 3DX Tech did 1418 Newtons. 
according to our previous video. This material, when we average the two test results, is about 4,000 Newton meters of force in this printed in the same orientation on the same printer, 22 IDEX. That is frankly quite impressive. Let's check out what we can do in the z-axis. Obviously this material is gonna be a lot weaker in the z-axis. That's just the nature of FDM 3D printing. All right, we are already deviating off of that graph. So we got about a thousand. That's not the worst thing in the world. And as we can see, this part broke along the layer lines. So that's not good. Test number two of a part printed in the z-axis. Let's see what happens. All right, so off the bat, we are, it's going up. Oh, a little less, 991. Test number three, pressing start. It is following the exact same trajectory as the other part. It's gonna, oh, 877. That's not the greatest. So looking at this test, we can clearly see that the XY strength is insane for this material. And the Z axis is okay. These test parts are all printed in one batch on our 22 IDEX. And chamber temperature is not going to save you from suboptimal print settings. We're batch printing this with a bunch of other parts that we're using for testing. And frankly, that's not very optimal for layer time because the parts are printing with such inconsistent time between the layers that you're gonna get parts that probably have different strengths in different areas. Comment down below if you'd like to see us do a more in-depth video on HGNCF or any other materials for that matter. Not only will we go more in-depth with the testing of this material, but we'll also show you how to really optimize this material for your 3D prints. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like and subscribe to let us know if you enjoyed it. At Vision Miner, we're all about industrial 3D printing and 3D scanning solutions for your business, research lab, etc. We're ready to help you find the right solution for you and your business, even if it's not something we sell. Hit us up on our website at visionminer.com. And with that, bye for now.